Hello and welcome to the channel. Um, now this week we're going to be taking a look at our new purchase so let's go around and I'll show you and I'll explain a little bit about why we have another Vauxhall Corsa in the fleet. That's right, so we've got a Vauxhall Corsa. It's a 2008 and it's a 1.2 petrol engine. So it's very, very similar to the car that my wife drives, the one that you're used to seeing, the SXI 2010 model. So this is a 2008. I'm gonna take you a little bit around the car because things are a bit crazy when it comes to buying cars at the moment. So here in the UK, cars uh, used cars are very expensive. They have gone up in price a lot, uh, as has diesel and petrol at the moment as well. Anyone that lives in the UK around about March 2022, and you will know that fuel prices are a bit crazy. So it's not the time to be buying a car. But yet we've bought one. We've bought this Corsa and um, I'm going to tell you a bit about how much we've paid the faults we've found because to be honest the faults that I've found don't fit the price and that's what's happening everywhere at the moment you're paying over the odds for most cars at the moment unfortunately but when you need a car you buy a car Taking a look around the interior, it's not bad condition. You've got age-related marks up the top. The seats are in pretty good nick, I think. Um, just generally, it's had a bit of a clean. My daughter spent a bit of time trying to clean it out. We need to just air it out a bit and improve things a touch. But we've got a few issues that I've spotted whilst we've been checking it out. Now, it is a high mileage you'll be able to see it's 125,000 that's this is the 1.2 petrol and it's got the timing chain so that's not too bad going but uh, I'll come to that a little bit later on let's go for a general walkabout and show you a few of the exterior and then we'll move on to the interior and engine now at first glance it doesn't look too bad but on closer inspection you can see there's a few rusty spots now it all looks like surface rust to be honest um, had a good poke and prod about and it doesn't feel too deep that's probably the worst bit there actually um, so again you see the rest of it the sill and everything it looks fairly solid so I think just a few little patch ups around the edges you can see the uh, the bumpers had a bit of a bash at some point to be honest what Corsa hasn't everyone's driven in the reversed into something in a Corsa so I'm not too bothered about that um, going around the rest of it not too bad the bonnet's got a few little chips and dings in it generally the tires are in bad condition actually They're, they've got a fair bit of tread left in them uh, wing mirrors are fine uh, you can see it's been scratched it's been keyed down the side I'm hoping that we can just use a correction pen type of thing to uh, to solve that one but uh, other than that not too bad uh, you can see we do have a down to the clear uh, sorry down to the undercoat there so that is going to need a bit of attention to it on to a few annoying things look at what I found in the fuel filler really this was from a cellar it had that put in it so that's ridiculous get rid of that we'll put a new one of those on it's only about a fiver to replace it there's lots of little niggles like that that are quite frustrating to be honest but again it's it's what you get for the for the money at the moment you can see it's cleaned up reasonably well on the interior it's got the standard radio and the standard system none of the add-ons on the steering wheel or anything fancy like that no auto lights no auto wipers it is just the basic model it's uh, classed as the life model 
which is the the basic spec on these ones I believe you can see scratches and scuffs all over the place the glove box is hanging off you can see that that was actually a quick fix in the end so that wasn't too bad no damage and starting it up it starts really on the button it's really good at starting cold or hot no problems at all with that so and that's uh, that's before I've done anything to it you can see we are getting a fault light now that is the service and electrical fault light and we'll plug in later on and get the diagnostics and explain what's going on there otherwise sat there idling awake happily so let's go take a look in the bonnet now it's a little bit noisier than I'd like to be honest. It does have a slight exhaust going on here, just at the back there. But it also moves its big jump. If you have a tiny chain start to go as well, that's due to me and good service. And checking things like oil and the typical stuff so when I was buying I obviously checked this first but I thought I'd show you what looks like inside uh, you can see fairly clear so although the outside of the bottle is murky the inside not too bad actually all clear no oily residue nothing like that on the top so that's really encouraging and it warmed up quite quickly as well so that's another good sign that water is flowing through the coolant system. And let's do the check under the oil cap. Quite difficult to undo at times these. Now here you can see some cream. You can now this is normally the big panic warning signs. However, because this has got a plastic cam cover, this is actually quite common. Moisture does collect in the top, especially when you do short journeys. So it's almost expected on these 1.2 engines. Now I know that goes against everything that you know when buying a car, but it's fine. So long as when you drop the oil, it's not completely like that, then you're good. few simple things that uh, that we've got we've got the glove box is kind of falling apart now I suspect that we've lost a few plastic clips and that that's damaged so whether that's repairable or replaceable I mean it's easy to replace I've, I've shown you how to take these out many times before so that's not too much of an issue um, in terms of everything else the uh, fan blower wasn't working when we bought it the seller did change that straight away no question so that was good uh, he did say that it does need a service so that's what we're going to get on with and do today now annoyingly euro car parts have seriously let me down um, they've taken well over a week to deliver what should be a simple order of spark plugs oil coolant and oil filter so unfortunately they've messed up and it slowed down this whole video actually uh, i would have liked to have done it a lot sooner so i'm going to get by with what i've managed to order and get hold of for now and uh, now i did get a coil pack because we do have some issues so let's get the diagnostics plugged in and take a look at what the car's complaining about it's going to break out my trusty Autel and we'll get some diagnostics going so how much did we pay for this well this car came in at £1,100 that's uh, after a bit of discount and a bit of a conversation about it and unfortunately that's the kind of price you're getting so it's a high miler and under normal circumstances that price is too high really but needs must at the moment this is kind of what cars are going for sadly so if you're in the used car market at the moment it's a tricky decision right. 
get her started and just move her up to the garage. You can hear it's quite a smooth starter to be honest. No issues at all actually starting. Now when it's hot we were getting an uh, oil pressure light just at initial start and I don't know whether that's just because the oil and filter need replacing and we need to sort that. We've got the service light on which isn't a huge surprise to be honest with you. But let's just get ourselves in place and then we can take a look. But you can hear it's a lovely smooth runner and it starts on the button so I'm quite pleased with that. No real fault lights showing. See we've got the service indicator on which is fine I'll just reset that shortly but other than that not too bad and it's ticking away sounds like we've got a little bit of an exhaust noise but again that's nothing to worry about really so let's uh, let's get in the bonnet and get working let's take the coil pack and take a look at the plug so it's fairly straightforward it's just electrical connector on the end like that, it's just a, I don't know if the camera can see that, yeah, push and pull and then a couple of torques, now this is a T30, I've already cracked them loose, do it carefully, And then you just kind of rock it backwards and forwards. Here we go. And now you can see that's the coil pack. Now sometimes the rubber will kind of get stuck on the plugs and snap, but this one's actually come off fairly clean. Now there is a few bits of rubbish down the bottom so I'm going to get a hoover and hoover those out before I take the plugs out just to make sure that nothing drops down. Let's take a look at these spark plugs then. Although this is a plug socket, it's not grabbing a hold of it, so let's just bring it out. Yeah, it's not the best, it's not the worst I've seen, at least they're not uh, oiled up and fouled, so that's not quite as bad as I thought. I'm going to take the rest out and compare them, and I'll let you know and see what we find. I've looked through them all now and they're all not too bad i do have some replacements arriving so i am going to change them anyway but definitely going to change the coil pack because the closer i look at it it's it's rusted there's there's rust inside and that can't be good the inside there's a little bit of corrosion on the contact so i think that's not helping us at all so uh, what i'll do is get the new plugs on and we'll get the new coil pack and fastening the plugs up we're using our torque wrench set to 25 newton meters there we go not very tight at all just over hand tight to be honest there we go so that's all four plugs torqued up correctly now what i'm going to show is I've got a little bit of copper grease, copper slip, that I'm going to use. Now this is normally a bit controversial, but 
I'll explain my, my thinking. I tend to put the very, very tiniest of piece on the end. Actually, these ones are pre-greased. See that green in there? That bit of grease, I'm still going to put a little bit on to be honest with you. But basically that stops them from sticking to the plugs and causing them to rip. It's just the tiniest of mount just on the ends. Because obviously you don't want it to interfere with the electrical connection at all. So whatever you do, don't go soaking it or anything like that. So there we go. And now just line it up over the top of the plugs and just ease it back in rock it backwards and forwards and then it'll start to seat into place you're pushing against the spring so there is a bit of a bit of resistance there you can feel that it's it's gone all the way in and if we put these in and just hand tighten them just to feel the position. Yep, they're starting to go in nicely now. Should be able to hand tighten, you see. And then just nip them up. They don't need to be overly tight. I just tend to do these hand tight. like so and then we take the electrical connector and we plug this in there you go it's clipped into place and we can give that a go check that that's running nicely now I thought I'd show you checking the diagnostics using the Voxcom software so we're going to connect it up to the car and we're going to take a look at the electrical systems and look for the faults especially look for why the fault light was still on so we go into the software to identify the car and we let it scan through all the systems and look for what faults we've got and you see it works its way through each of them and uh, we've got a BCM fault and we've got an engine ECU fault And we kind of expected this because we do have the electrical fault light on which I'd shown you before that's the picture of the spanner through the car so that isn't engine management just remember that so if we now ask what the codes are so we've got a fan fault so the cooling fan is faulty let's clear that and also the interior dimming switch so that's just the interior light that's faulty as well so we'll clear those for now but uh, expect those to come back. We're on the last few jobs now uh, let's change the air filter I've put oil in filled it up I'm just letting that settle now also changed the oil filter remember it's quite an easy oil filter to do on the course so you can see it's just there so it's nice and straightforward to do actually so um, I'll show you what the air filter looks like. Yeah, I've seen better, I've seen worse. Let's get the new one in. goes back to me thinking that this car wasn't serviced for quite a while. I don't think that's been helping it one little bit actually. And I'll never understand why because the service oil oil filter Oil 
filter, air filter, oil, all came to around about £100. In fact, no, no, sorry, it was uh, be more like 120 including the coil pack. But obviously you don't generally change a coil pack for a standard service. So I would say a service for this car, you're definitely at 100 quid or, or less in parts. That's not bad going to keep your car running nice and happy. But it's not a difficult job, I've done plenty of videos showing how to service all of the cars that I own. So do take a look at any of the other videos as well. They're all practically the same when it comes down to oil and uh, air filter changes. I am going to do coolant, but unfortunately the new coolant hasn't arrived yet. But again, that's a fairly simple one that we've covered in the past. Just drain and replace. Now let me go and take you to have a look at the old oil filter. The old oil filter is in here and you can see it is in a pretty bad state. Um, it actually came apart when I was taking it out and you can see how it was already twisted like this. That makes me think this won't have been passing oil through it very efficiently. And that again won't have been doing the car any good, so I'm really pleased we changed that. Um, I did replace it with a Bosch P7006 oil filter. You need to make sure with these Vauxhall courses, there's so many variations and it's easy. Often when you put in the number plate into a lot of these car check websites, they don't come out with the right one. So do double check everything you can before you order. So um, I think that's okay. I'll check the oil one more time and then we'll give it a try and make sure that it's all working happily. And that about covers it really, uh, fairly straightforward. You can see, not the uh, not the best purchase in the world, but it is what it is. You need to buy these things time to time and it's what is the best we can get for the money. Now I don't think it's gonna give us any long-term problems. A few more jobs that'll be done over time on it, but it's an old car, it's a high miler. That's what you expect. Do hope this video has been good and you've enjoyed it. Don't get loads more content coming up very, very soon on the channel, including our special that's coming up very soon. So remember to hit subscribe and we'll see you in another video.